Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's uh, video, we are going to talk about open sets and some theorems related to open sets. Okay, so first we are going to learn what is an open set. Okay, so open set is such a set whose each and every point is an interior point of a set. That means if S is an open set, then every point of S is an interior point. Okay, now what is an interior point? That I have discussed in my previous video. You can go to that video and check it out. Uh, you can find the link down here. Okay. Achha. So if all the points of a set are interior points, that kind of a set is called open set. Let's take a few quick examples. Suppose if I take the interval 1 to 3, okay, the closed interval 1 to 3. All right. Now I have discussed this in the previous video when I was talking about interior points. Is 3 an interior point of this set? No, it's not an interior point. Why? Because if you take a small neighborhood around 3, some portion of the neighborhood is going completely outside my S set. So if this neighborhood, if I call it as N of 3, then N of 3 is not a subset of the set S. Okay, so that means 3 is not an interior point. So every point of this set S is not an interior point because we can see 3 is not an interior point. Similarly, 1, 1 be an interior point. Okay, remaining all the points are interior points, but 1 and 3 are not interior points of the set. So that means in this example, S is not an open set. Okay, but if I had changed this example a very little by making the closed intervals as open intervals, then in this case, 3 and 1 are not present in the S set itself. Okay, so if 1 and 3 are not present in the set, then obviously the question of those two points being interior points don't even arise, right? So if I take this as my example, as my S set, you can see every point of this set is an interior point because 1 and 3 are not included here. So this is an example of an open set. Okay. So that means, what are we trying to say? That if I have a set S and we know this in general, we know the relation between set S and int s, that means interior of s, what is the interior of s? The collection of all the interior points of the set and we know the relation between them is subset, right? Int s is subset of s. In general, int s contains almost all the elements of s or maybe contains some elements lesser than s. Like for this example, closed interval 1 to 3, int s is a sub proper subset of s. And in case of this example, int s becomes equal to s, okay? So when I am talking about an open set, in that case, a set will be open set if all its interior points are the uh, points of the set s itself. That means this subset condition is not going to be there. It's going to be int s is equal to the set itself, okay? So if the set of all the interior points generates the set itself, then that kind of a set is called open set. And you can see that open intervals are by default open sets. All right. Let's take a few more quick examples. Let's say if I take the set of all natural numbers, right? Is any point of this set an interior point? I have discussed this in my previous video. None of the natural numbers are interior points because if you take a small neighborhood around any natural number, there will be infinite number of real numbers inside that neighborhood which will not even belong to the S set. So this set is not an open set because none of its points are interior points. Okay, so this is not open. If I take the set of all rational numbers, here also, if I take any rational number and take a small neighborhood around that rational number, there will be infinite number of irrational numbers inside that neighborhood and none of them belongs to the set itself. So that means none of the points here are integer points. So this is also not an open set. 
okay now let's see if i take the example any closed set okay any closed set a closed interval a to b that is an open set okay if i take any closed interval that's sorry sorry my mistake if i take any open interval then that's an open set and if i take any closed interval that's not an open set so we can prove this as a theorem later on in my later videos i will prove this as a theorem that if you take an open interval it is definitely going to be an open set no matter what okay now one interesting question arises here if i take union of open intervals that means if i take something like this a comma b union c comma d if i take union of open intervals will that be an open set so that's something we have to prove okay so that means i know that this a comma b this is an open set because it's an open interval again i know the c comma d this is an open set because it's an open interval but will the union of these two open sets be an open set yes it will be so we are going to prove that right now okay so i am going to prove that the union of two open sets is an open set okay so let's say so the theorem which i am going to state is if g1 and g2 are two open sets then number 1 g1 union g2 is going to be open set number 2 that intersection that is also going to be an open set okay so we can prove these two things as theorems let's take a look at the proof of the first one that is g1 union g2 whether that is an open set or not okay so individually i have already stated that both g1 and g2 they are open sets now i want to examine the union of them okay so this you can make an idea very easily using a pictorial format let's say this is my g1 okay and let's say this is my g2 and i want to take the union of these two sets so the union will be this entire region this entire region will be g1 union g2 okay now i know that g1 is an open set this is an open set i know that's already told to me i already know g2 is an open set that is also told to me so that means if g1 is an open set if i take any point from g1 suppose exclusively belonging to g1 or maybe in the intersection does not matter if i take a random element from g1 that means i can find a neighborhood around this point such that the neighborhood of this point n of x will be completely a subset of g1 because g1 is an open set and this is the definition of open set that every point will be interior point and interior point means the neighborhood will be subset of that set right so that means if i take n of x which is subset of g1 so i can write that n of x will be also subset of g1 union g2 right if nx is lying completely inside g1 if i increase that interval by taking another union then obviously n of x is still going to lie inside the bigger thing also if n of x is lying in the, inside the smaller part then obviously if i increase that still n of x is going to lie inside that part also that means n of x is also going to be a subset of g1 union g2 so what does this mean that i have taken a random element from g1 and i can find a neighborhood such that the neighborhood is completely lying inside g1 union g2 and when i am taking an element from g1 okay if i take an element x from g1 that obviously means that i have taken the element from g1 union g2 okay any element lying in g1 is same as saying it is lying in g1 union g2 right so that means an element taken from the union i am getting the neighborhood of that point is subset of that same union that means what the set g1 union g2 then open set okay so let's do it a little bit formally so if i take that let x belongs to g1 union g2 this implies x belongs to g1 or x belongs to g2 right that's the property of union i can break it up into two parts so if i just proceed with this part that let x belongs to g1 the one that i have drawn here okay let x belongs to g1 so that means x belongs to 
G1 union G2. Okay, Achha, I don't need to write this. Let me keep it as explain also G1. Now I know that G G1 is an open set. This is told to me over here. So as per the definition of open set, there exists a neighborhood of X such that the neighborhood is completely a subset of G1, right? This is as per the definition of open set itself, right? And just as I told you here, if NX is subset of G1, if I increase the set by taking another union, it's still going to be a subset. So that means N of X is going to be subset of G1 union G2 as well. So I have taken X from G1 union G2 and I can see that there exists a neighborhood such that it is completely a subset of G1 union G2, right? So what does this mean? This means that X is an interior point of G1 union G2, right? Now since X was arbitrarily chosen, completely arbitrarily chosen, that means every point of G1 that I choose is ultimately going to be an interior point of G1 union G2. So that means G1 union G2 is open set and how did I claim that? By the arbitrariness of X1. Since X1 was arbitrarily chosen, so that means whatever X I choose, it's ultimately going to be an interior point. That means the entire set turns out to be an open set. So if I had started with this portion, I can again proceed similarly, right? I can again proceed similarly, just like this case and ultimately reach this same conclusion. So ultimately I get that union of the two open sets is again an open set. Okay. This intersection, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Open your books and go through it. I hope you will understand. If you don't understand, please let me know in the comment section. I will definitely make my next video upon the intersection of two open sets is also an open set. And also I would like to ask if I take infinite number of unions, okay, let's say finite or infinite, whatever. If I take arbitrary number of unions, then will that still be an open set? That is question number one. And another question, intersection of two open sets is open. But again, if I take arbitrary number of intersections or if I take finite number of intersections, which one of them will be open set and which one won't be open set? This is a question I'm going to ask and I hope you are able to answer that. Let me know whether I need to make a video on that to clear up that concept. Okay. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a nice day.